This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. So when you set up a brand new access point, step one, you get it plugged in, step two, you test it, right? right. Get connected and, and go. Technically, you can, you can run with an that's access it. point like that, but it is not secured. So right. that's where we do our follow-up. And, uh, and we're going to show you, I've got the uh, uh, Linksys, whatever, command interface right. kind of brought up. Just because the Linksys routers are so popular, yep. Linksys slash Cisco. Uh, but you know, you might have Belkin or Netgear or D-Link. Who, who else is out there? That's about it. Those yeah. Big yeah. Ones. So, uh, so you, you might have any of these vendors mm -hmm. that, are, that are out there, and the web interface might be a little bit different. The way you configure it might be a little different, but the, the, the concepts settings, are the yep. same. And that's what we want to talk about as well. So when we begin to set up the idea of the wireless uh, in, in secure ways, one of the first things that we've got to know is when we gain access into the wireless access point, it normally has a default username and password. Now this default username and password is not secret. Right. Anybody that's ever set up a wireless access point, uh, if you've done more than one, more than likely, you'll probably see something. Now, most of them are actually set up fairly easily, like admin and then either like Cisco or one, two, three, or whatever it might be. And, and as an attacker, you know, if I see a network out there that is called mm -hmm. Linksys, I can just go to Google and I can do a search here. Let's, let's do it. Um, Linksys default password, right? Yep. And, uh, and so here's a, a web page for me, Linksys router default passwords, and I can go in here and, and let's see what it says. And here they there give me a, a list. Oh, here, yep. for Comcast routers, username Comcast, Comcast. Uh, you know, or, or password Comcast, yep. username administrator. So you can go in here and see kind of what you expect for the default username, default passwords, and so on. Like admin, admin is mm -hmm. the default for most of them. So yeah. it's that simple. Or people can go and download the manual for your router, and then they've got and that default it. password. And that's one of the easiest ways that somebody that is looking for an unsecured access point can get in and really begin to change things and cause other problems for you. Yep. So we want to make sure that usually one of the first things that we do after we uh, get set up here is if we can to change the default username and password, right? Right. So I've got the uh, the user interface for a Linksys router pulled up, and on the main page they give you the ability to configure all sorts of default settings that are, are really just based on general functionality, right. nothing really based on, on security. Why am I in Hong Kong? Uh, what the, what is going on it's here? Because you're an international traveler. Here we go. We'll we'll be in the Eastern time there zone you today. Go. Yep. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so there we go. So anyhow, if we want to change the security settings, there's a few different places we have to go. Right. Unfortunately, they don't make it you know, all consistent. Right. So for this one, if we go under administration, right here, I can see where I can change my password. Now, mm -hmm. on this particular router, I can't change the username. Right. Admin is the username, and that's it. But on a lot of routers, you can change the username, and you absolutely should right. because that is a, it's a brute force target. Yeah, and it makes it much more complex, right? Instead of somebody going, okay, it's admin, and they just have to crack through the password, well, they now at least have to guess the username as well mm -hmm. as the password to gain access. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of passwords here, it's easy to actually think of passwords that you think nobody's going to ever think about, right? Like, oh, I'm going to use password <laughs> as my password. Uh, or, you know, nobody ever actually thinks about the idea of, of uh, I love uh, dogs or something, whatever, whatever your pet name is, try and make it a little bit more complex uh, is the idea. Now, when we talk about the idea of the um, uh, complex passwords, usually you may not have to go this uh, particular uh, event, but at home at least, but we talk about what, uh, upper and lowercase letters, mm -hmm. numbers, uh, fancy characters, the ones that you normally have to press the shift key and the number keys to get access to, and then a certain minimum length. Uh, is about it. Is there anything else I might have forgotten on that? Well, one? you know, on a normal PC, on a website or whatever, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have noticed that a lot of these routers, though, don't support um, very complex well, passwords. You, you know, some of these are running yep. very streamlined OSs that aren't very flexible. Definitely use whatever the maximum right. is you can on these things, though. And, and sometimes they'll tell you this one doesn't seem to say. Yep. So, you know, we could try something really complex. We could try something simple. But just like Ronnie said, yeah. capital letters, lowercase letters, special characters, numbers. Yeah. You know, you definitely want to have a mixture of that. And if it gives us the ability to actually put in a longer password, in other words, it doesn't limit us to like six letters or characters or something. Usually, the the way that we normally recommend it is maybe come up with a phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the you know the favorite line of uh, your first uh, or your your favorite uh, rap song. Yeah, right. my, <laughs> my favorite rap song. Let's see. Uh, yeah, hmm. I, I, I I listen to. Uh, 
the country. So I'm trying to think of a two live crew title that I'm That's allowed right. to say on the show. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And yep. it, but yeah, some, any some, of our some type of a frame. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phrase is, is the key here. So the more complex you make it, the harder you're going to actually make it on somebody just trying to hack in uh, very easily for us. So at least set that up. Absolutely. Uh, and that prevents anybody from reconfiguring stuff that you've already configured to make it work on your network. Okay. All right. So changing that, very simple. Some routers make you do it. They make you make you do it when right. you first set it up. Other ones you have to go and set it up for yourself. But definitely change it. You definitely right. want to do that. Uh, yeah. What's next on our agenda? Next on our agenda is the idea of changing the SSID, the service set identifier. Okay? Yep. Uh, the default service set identifier is one of those things that we want to make sure that, that we do change it. Now, it's not really security, is it? It's, it's just setting it differently, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, you don't get security on it except uh, you know, you do want to be able to differentiate your wireless from somebody else's so that you mm -hmm. know you're on the right network. Right. Notice this router is defaulting to its model number, which is uh, awesome because yeah. it makes it that much easier for somebody <laughs> to break in. Uh, so this one, the default network name is WRT54G version 8, which is the, yeah. the router this is. And, uh, and who in the heck would guess that? You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it could be Linksys, it could be Necker, it could sure. be whatever, you know, that, that name is. Just change it to something so that you recognize it, so that when you mm -hmm. look down at your system taskbar or whatever and it says you're connected to Don's network, mm -hmm. then you know, hey, I'm on Don's network. I'm not on the, my neighbor's network or, right. or whatever. And when, uh, when we actually do set this up, it's important for us not only to differentiate this, but a lot of times, like I said, we, even though we might think it's a security aspect, and it may be to a little bit, just make sure that you know uh, people are connected to yours, but the problem is it's normally what broadcast out there, mm -hmm. right? So it's always sent out there, and so even somebody just walking by might actually walk by with a wireless device and be able to pick this uh, point up here. But by at least setting it, you can at least know who's actually going to get connected uh, to your particular network and, and how it's actually seen out there uh, on the, uh, out in the air. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, I, I want to mention it here, a lot of routers have this option that you see right here, wireless SSID broadcast, right. enable or disable. You can disable it and right. then you won't advertise your wireless network, someone would have to manually type in that SSID on their computer to connect. Some people will look at that as a form of security, but I'll right. tell you right now that it's a false security. It because if there's even one client connected, an attacker can fire up a wireless sniffer, yep. which is really just software on your laptop. They can capture a few packets and extract the SSID right from the packet. So you yeah. know they, they can pull it from there and, and you don't really get any security out of it at all. Mm -hmm. But the combination of these things, right, changing our, our uh, SSID as well as the default password and some other things we're going to show you should make our secure our, our wireless networks here a little bit more secure for ourselves, too. Yep, okay. Absolutely. Also, as we continue to be connected, one of the things we did talk about last time in, in just basic connectivity, we need to make sure that our wireless access points have an SSID and the clients that connect in, our laptops, our mobile devices that connect in, they have to know that. The other thing that also should match is going to be the idea of encryption, right? Mm -hmm. We can set it up where you can connect in without any encryption at all, but we already talked about where that is actually a bad idea for us. So one of the things we may actually want to choose now is, of course, making sure that we do choose some type of encryption setting. Okay? Yeah. So let's talk about some of the different options we have there, too. Yeah, the, the screen that I'm on here, this is just the basic wireless mm -hmm. setting. So I can change right. the SSID, a few other little settings. But if I go to wireless security, that's where the real action is. Right. And on here, I'll see that the default for this router, just like most of them, is disabled. Mm -hmm. All right. So no encryption. And and you know that's great. You know it'll work. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> uh, but anybody could intercept your traffic and potentially get on the network. Right. If you drop it down, you'll see the various choices that your mm -hmm. router has. Now you may or may not have all of these options mm -hmm. depending on your router. If you have an older one, you might only have WEP. Right. And and, and that's it. But on a newer router, you should see all the ones that you see right here. Do uh, you want to do the rundown, Ronnie? Uh, we can talk about the idea of WPA and WPA2. Now, these were improvements to the original idea of WEP. For us, uh, when we do see WPA and WPA2, we also have two separate options as well. Uh, we have personal and we have enterprise. Whenever you see the term personal, regardless of whether it's WPA or WPA2, that means you're going to use what we call a pre-shared key. Most of us in the home environment, a small office, home office environment, that's the option we're going to use. 
That means we set the, um, the encryption on that access point. Our clients that connect in will also uh, be able to see that and that they'll have to actually have that pre-shared key. When you see the term enterprise, it means that the, the uh, encryption password or passphrase is actually stored somewhere else. Uh, usually for us, what we call a radius server. And most of us are not going to have something like that in our own home environment here. Today, the recommended minimum level, okay, you can do whatever you want to, recommended minimum is going to be WPA2, which is going to be the strongest one that we have right now. And for most of us, we're going to use the personal idea, okay, uh, is the one that we will see. Now, you actually see that there's another option there actually for radius, too. Yep. Yep. And, you know, let's kind of run down this list right. real quick in, in kind of chronological order. Right. When, when wireless networks, 802.11 based networks, came mm -hmm. out in 2000, 2001, right around right. there, um, they, they had this WEP, which right. is the Wired Equivalency Protocol, mm -hmm. and it meant that you had the same level of security as if you were on a physical cable. Right. It was broken probably six months after yeah. release, not very long, and, and so it, it really had some serious problems. WEP worked on a, on a password basis. Mm -hmm. You used a password, and, and that was it. Well, WPA yeah. came out next, WPA Personal and Enterprise. It used a much stronger form of encryption. WPA Personal uses a password, just like Ronnie right. said. Uh, Enterprise uses a certificate. certificate. And oh. WPA introduced support for what was called EAP, the Extensible Authentication Protocol. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is one that can turn up on the exam, not, right. not very often, but it does. Um, the EAP, and EAP allowed us to do uh, an all new type of, of authentication that was really separate from the encryption side. Mm -hmm. With WPA, WPA2, WEP, the pre-shared key, the password you put in is actually used for the encryption key. Mm -hmm. With EAP, you have one key that you're using for the encryption and another key that you're using for authentication. Right. And that's where RADIUS comes in. RADIUS is that server that sits off to the side that is able to validate whether or not a certificate is good or not, whether a username and password combo is good or not, and it can then pass that approval right. back to the original devices. So in order of strength, RADIUS does not actually provide encryption mm -hmm. at all. So it would be the weakest option here. It would just be verifying that devices are allowed to talk in the network, not actually encrypting any data. Then WEP provides light encryption. Is it 40-bit, Ronnie? It's uh, 48 or 56, okay. depending on, yeah. So 48 the, or 56 yeah. bit, which is, is pretty low if right. you're not familiar with the bit rates of, of uh, encryption. Mm -hmm. That's not what we like to see. WPA cranks it up. And WPA, I don't think they need it for no. the exam, but TKIP is what it uses. Yep. And it does um, uh, it does up to 128 bit, doesn't yep. it? Okay. And then WPA2 Personal uses CCMP, which does 256 bit. So much, much stronger. Right. So by strength here, we would actually want to, of course, be able to choose the, the highest strength possible. Now, you may be able to do so, but remember, you might also have older devices that are trying to connect and that may not support that. Mm -hmm.